Welcome to ForksTV.com's PM Exchange. It's Friday, November 23rd. I'm Remy Hokey. Today I'm joined by Boris Schlossberg from DailyFX.com. Boris will weigh in on the major currency pairs and crosses before we head into the weekend. Good afternoon, Boris. Hi, good to be with you again. Great to have you here in this holiday shortened week. Well, as we um, near the weekend, we've seen uh, in the overnight session the dollar hit new record lows against the euro and the Swissy, and the yen also um, fell to uh, the yen uh, gain against the dollar and hit um, 108. But as we go into the weekend, if you could give us your levels um, for euro dollar as it is uh, getting closer to the 150 mark. Definitely. We actually had a very interesting price action. We seem to be getting into this new tradition of high volatility during Thanksgiving weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, basically what happened last night was dollar Swiss came to within very close, for the last several days, came to within very close to the 110 level. And last night traders in Hong Kong and Singapore decided to push it below the 110 level. Once they did that, there was absolutely no liquidity there at all, and the pair collapsed all the way down to 108.83. That in turn, of course, pulled euro dollar all the way to within 150. But because all this was driven by stop hunting activity, mm -hmm. it was really no fundamental data behind it, there was very, very little impetus behind that move, it reversed very quickly. And before the uh, morning trade in New York, we were pretty much at the same levels we started with in, in New York. Clearly, the euro dollar does want to go to 150. I think the overall speculative sentiment is so strong towards that level, it really wants to achieve it. However, it needs much more substantial economic data to really move towards that level. Euro dollar going to 150 is a function of more bearish U.S. news. And next week we have U.S. housing data, which is the key factor to determine whether the Fed is going to cut rates further or whether we're really going into a major serious economic funk. Should the housing data actually surprise to the upside, there's quite a lot of potential that the euro dollar could pull back. But if we do have worse than expected housing data, then it's very possible euro dollar will go to 150 by next week simply on that momentum alone. Well, now that we've taken a look at euro dollar, uh, let's move on to the dollar against the Japanese yen. Um, on Monday, both the U.S. markets as well as the Japanese markets will come back from uh, their holiday. But um, we'll be keeping an eye on global equities as well as risk aversion. So going into Monday's session, uh, what ranges do you expect to see for dollar yen? Yeah, dollar yen now has broken below the 110 and broken below the 108. And some of the longer term traders are really targeting 100 as a possible intermediate term level, intermediate term goal. But we think that's quite far away um, at this point. Dollar yen has been a major beneficiary, yen rather, has been a major beneficiary of risk aversion. And as equity markets have pulled back, so has dollar yen. But one very interesting thing has happened since then. It really hasn't rallied whenever equity markets have rallied, when risk appetite has come back. If you notice today, for example, Dow is up 181 points and dollar yen is barely up. And the reason for that is because, again, it has to do with interest rate differentials. The market now expects U.S. rates to come down even further. And as the interest rate differential compresses between the dollar and the yen, it is far less vulnerable to carry trade flows than it used to be. So it still keeps going down when we have risk liquidation, but doesn't necessarily go up now as we, as we get risk assumption. And it's quite likely that next week we may test the 107 level if we get a little bit more of risk, uh, risk aversion coming back into the market. Well, Boris, you just mentioned a uh, rate differential, so that brings me to the topic of the British currency. Um, so let's move on to um, the sterling against the dollar as well as the euro. So um, we've been seeing overbought technicals for um, euro sterling. And um, following the BOE inflation report, there has been talk about a rate cut from the Bank of England. So if you could give us your um, forecast for the sterling against the dollar as well as the euro. Yeah, euro sterling is at four-year highs at 7,200, and it's very much a direct result of the fact that almost everyone in the market feels there's a very, very high probability BOE will cut mm -hmm. rates. Well, of course, ECB is at very worst expected to stay stationary, perhaps even raise rates in the Q1 of 2008. Um, and the story this week really got confirmed because we had BOE minutes come out mm -hmm. that sort of basically essentially sa gave an inkling to the market that the BOE may be willing and ready to cut rates come December. Should that happen, I think we could see even higher levels in euro pound, perhaps even to 72.50. But clearly it's getting tremendously overbought at this level. Should it correct, it's really going to be a function more of euro coming back down and perhaps pound you know, remaining stationary rather than um, the pound rallying higher. The pound mm -hmm. is pretty much done with this, with this move and there's very, very strong potential. We actually feel there's a strong potential that will go back to the two handle eventually before it 
we sh it has a much higher chance of going to the two handle rather than going to the two ten again as it did before. And um, I want to touch on the higher I yielding currency of the Australian dollar. We've seen that pull back against the yen this week. And um, in terms of uh, event risk and events going on this weekend in Australia, we do have the federal elections. Okay. So in the coming session, um, what levels do you see for the Aussie dollar against the yen as well as the U.S. currency? Well, you know, generally when we have elections, currencies come under, under a lot of pressure because mm -hmm. of political uncertainty. But at this point, the polls have been so uniformly skewed towards labor. And the, the Australian dollar has come down so much mm -hmm. against the U.S. dollar, partly because of that and partly because of risk aversion, that I think most of the surprise is baked into the price. The market at this point takes it as a given that labor will take over, um, that there will be a more moderate government in Australia, perhaps less market-friendly government in Australia. A and that may have a long-term impact on the, on the Australian dollar, mm -hmm. but for the time being, most of that negative news is baked into the, uh, into the currency pair right now. And one last currency pair I'd like to touch on is the U.S. dollar against the Canadian dollar. Um, in the session, it's been um, trading between uh, 9860 and went up to 9899, and that is getting closer to parity against the U.S. dollar. Um, as the pair has ended the session and change, what do you see for the pair um, going into next week? We actually think there's a very reasonable chance it could reach parity. Uh, next next week, mm -hmm. especially if we get any kind of uh, strength in the dollars. If we get positive housing news, if we get any sort of less of a doomsday scenario out of the dollar, because remember, one of the things that the dollar cat has been trading off of, aside from strong mm -hmm. oil prices, has been the notion that, again, U.S. rates will go down, Canadian rates perhaps will go up. Now we have an idea that Canadian rates are certainly not going to go up. Uh, Governor Dodge gave a strong indication mm -hmm. that they really uh, you know, are feeling tremendous amount of pressure. And Canadian manufacturers have been suffering tremendously off of this incredible run in the loonie. And some rebalancing is due. So a move back through par, even if it's temporary, um, is quite natural. And we think it, it very much is due next week. And last but not least, before we wrap it up, if we could take a look at the week ahead. Um, as you mentioned, we do have key housing data coming up from the U.S. And we have a couple of Fed speakers uh, lined up next week. And in addition, we have uh, GDP data and personal income and spending. So Forex traders, um, for Forex traders out there in the viewing audience, what should they be watching in terms of event risk? Well, you know, aside from the housing data, which will be the front of the week, mm -hmm. the back of the week, we think, is going to be dominated by the personal income, personal spending data. It's very important. The whole dollar bear argument mm -hmm. is predicated on the assumption that the U.S. consumer is essentially falling off a cliff, that the U.S. consumer is really being burdened by all of the economic factors that are, that are facing him. Mm -hmm. Should income rise above spending? That will show that the U.S. consumer remains in a relatively healthy state of mind. And as we're going to get more anecdotal evidence from Christmas retail spending that consum consumption is relatively decent, that the doomsday view of the dollar perhaps may change. So those numbers will be very important at the end of the week to see if the U.S. consumer is holding up better than the market thinks uh, it is at this point. Okay, Boris, thank you very much for coming on the show today, and have a great weekend. Thanks again. It's great to be with you. This has been your Forex News with Boris Schlossberg from DailyFX.com. Next up, we have your equities and commodities wrap-up for the day. U.S. stocks advance, ending a holiday-shortened session and a volatile week on a positive note. There is Black Friday bargain hunting as the holiday shopping season got underway. Friday's session closed three hours early, and today's gains did not reverse weakness in the session prior to the Thanksgiving Day holiday. Trading volume was light, with market watchers cautious about today's gains. For the week, the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 1.49%, the Nasdaq fell 1.54%, while the S&P 500 lost 1.24%. For the session, the Dow added 181.84 points, or 1.42%, to close at 12,980.99. The tech-heavy Nasdaq rose 34.45, or 1.34%, to end at 2,596.60. And the S&P 500 advanced 23.93, or 1.69%, to close at 1,440.70. In the fixed income market, Treasury bond prices were up on the day. The yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury bond fell to 4.012% from 4.024% on Wednesday. Meanwhile, the 30-year bond fell to 4.438% from 4.467% on Wednesday. And in energy, crude oil futures pair losses seen earlier in the day and ended up at a record high above $98 a barrel. In thin training conditions, crude oil for January delivery gained 89 cents to close at $98.18 a barrel on the NYMEX. 
The contract hit a low of $96.55 earlier and a high of $98.45 in electronic trading. For the week, crude oil gained $4.34 a barrel or 4.4%. And in other petroleum products, December R. Bob gasoline added 2.99 cents to $2.467 a gallon. December heating oil closed up by 1.68 cents to $2.70.42 a gallon. Heating oil hit a new high of $2.7181 earlier. And December natural gas rose 15 cents to close at $7.70 per million BTU. And in the metals complex, gold futures rallied, ending up by $26 an ounce. In a shortened trading session, gold gained as the U.S. dollar fell to a new record low against the euro. Meanwhile, other metals gained today with uh, December silver up 31.5 cents, closing at $14.735 an ounce. December copper was up 10.3 cents, closing at $2.991 a pound. Meanwhile, January platinum added $15.80 to $1,483 an ounce, and December palladium gained three dollars and fifty five cents to close at three sixty one point fifty an ounce. This afternoon we're joined by Dave Meager, senior metals analyst at Aleron Trading. He'll recap today's session in metal prices and give us his short term outlook. December gold futures today were uh, up once again, uh, currently trading at eight hundred and twenty two dollars an ounce up almost $24 on the day. Today's strength coming from new lows once again in the dollar index against major currencies as we're seeing new highs in the December euro currency contract. Obviously, as the dollar continues to weaken against major currencies, new strength and buying comes in to the gold market, driving prices higher uh, from last uh, week's or last two weeks highs up around $850 an ounce. Uh, in continuation with the weaker dollar, there's been talk from the FOMC minutes that there could be further easing by the Fed. This type of mentality has kept pressure on the U.S. dollar and obviously strengthening gold prices in the weeks to come. Keep in mind, we did have a bit of a thin trading session today, so today's gain should be taken with a grain of salt. However, we believe that we are going to see gold prices moving higher in the weeks to come. So once again, December gold futures currently trading at $822.70 an ounce, up $24.10 on the day. That's Dave Meager with Alaron Trading. Have a great weekend. That was Dave Meager, Senior Metals Analyst at Alaron Trading with his commodities commentary. And that's it for today's edition of PM Exchange. I'm Remy Hokey. Join us Monday morning for your latest news update right here on ForexTV.com. Have a great weekend.